And according to the latest news poll in today's Australian, Tony Abbott is the preferred Prime Minister by 40 to 37. You wouldn't know where the 37 would come from. The Coalition has extended its two-party lead over Labor to 10%. But of course, those who believe that Kevin Rudd is the answer may equally have some soul-searching to do. Because on many occasions on this program, I've mentioned the infamous Heiner Affair. As you know, the Heiner story relates to 1998, uh, 1988. The Aboriginal girl, whom I won't name, gang-raped by inmates of the John Oxley Youth Detention Centre in Queensland. She was in the care of the Queensland Government. Some of the rapists confessed. No charges were laid. The then Premier Russell Cooper directed a former magistrate, Noel Heiner, to inquire into the rape. That inquiry was shut down when the Goss government came to power in 1989. Documents collected by Magistrate Heiner in relation to the matter were destroyed on the orders of the Goss Cabinet on March 5, 1990. Kevin Rudd was Wayne Goss's Chief of Staff at the time and subsequently became Director General of his Cabinet Office. The Heiner affair is about the destruction of evidence relating to a police investigation into the rape. Mr Rudd has always claimed that the shredding of the documents needed no further investigation. The fact is the shredding of the documents has never been properly investigated and the woman at the centre of the rape was denied her legal rights. That woman had hoped to have been in the Senate last year to eyeball those senators, Greens and Labor, who voted against a motion by independent Senator Xenophon when he unsuccessfully attempted to establish another Senate inquiry into the Heiner affair. The motion had the support of the Coalition, but not of Labor or the Greens, which prompted the question which I asked then, how much longer could Labor and the Greens senators hold out against another inquiry? Now, the woman in 2010 was paid 120000 by the Queensland Government and required to sign a confidentiality agreement. She told the Brisbane media in July 2010, I want the truth to still come out. To myself, that was yucky, dirty money to keep me quiet, to keep me hush-hush. I'd like to go to trial if I had the opportunity. Well, the Senate inquiry would give her that opportunity to tell her story under the protection of parliamentary privilege. However, there has been a development. These documents, the Heiner documents, have been delivered to every Australian senator on Australia Day. They include a 3,000-page audit of the issue by the eminent Sydney QC David Rofe. They were electronically delivered to each senator, and that now means that senators will be able to read the documents on their computers and will no longer be able to claim that they simply haven't been informed about the detail of this infamous affair. Five judges have signed a statement of concern about the Heiner affair. A House of Representatives committee, headed by Bronwyn Bishop, recommended that those responsible for the shredding of the documents, including the Goss Cabinet, should be charged with an offence pursuant to Section 129 of the Queensland Crimes Act. David Rofe, as I said, QC, has conducted a two-year audit of the matter which ran to 3,000 pages and nine volumes. The man who pursued all of this is Kevin Lindeberg, and he's thrown the cat among the pigeons so far as the pigeons might land on Kevin Rudd by delivering on Australia Day to every member of the Senate those meticulously prepared allegations of the most serious misconduct by some of the nation's most serious public officers, including the Governor-General, who was then the Queensland Governor, Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd, who was then head of the Cabinet Office, and a raft of Queensland jurists. Every member of the Senate now has got the material. I've read it. So too has Piers Ackerman. And Piers Ackerman is on the line. He is a News Limited columnist, of course. Piers, good morning. Uh, good morning, Alan. Well, you've got to wonder who in the Labor Party can tell the truth. Well, look, uh, if you take it from the, from the leader's performance on Four Corners last night, the Labor Party has a a clear problem with credibility. Um, I uh, was uh, was absolutely uh, stunned as I watched Julia Gillard in 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 in, in, in the most evasive manner, trying to duck questions, which, as Prime Minister, or, or even as a, a you know as a senior figure in any corporation, she should have been well briefed to manage and handle with a plausible response. But she, she looked like, uh, looked like a, a rabbit caught in the spotlight. And uh, as I think you said earlier on your program this morning, um, as she fumbled for a response, it clearly showed that uh, she had no plausible uh, re reply 
to the two to the two questions, which really boil down to, what did she know about the coup, and when did she know it? Mm, absolutely. Yes. Well, now let's take this step forward because she's gone. There's no way in the world she'll survive, and right. the move today will be uh, they'll move even further towards Kevin Rudd. So just let's look at that, yes. because now the Governor General, who was then the Queensland Governor, yes. the Foreign Minister Rudd, who was head of the Cabinet Office, yes. and of course the Labor Party collectively, who have tried to keep this Heiner affair out of the public yes. gaze, to say nothing of the Greens. Now every Senator now has got the 3,000-page audit. Well, this, this is, this is a, an extraordinary move. Um, the documents have been very carefully guarded, uh, and, but I must say that I have read them. Um, they were sent to the, to the senators, and I have seen uh, responses to, sh to indicate that uh, uh, government and and uh, opposition senators have received them now this i believe f puts them in the public domain and it's only a matter of time before members of the public can see for themselves exactly the extent of this extraordinary cover-up and it is as you as you're aware it is already being taught in Queensland schools as part of their curriculum and as, as well as in various international uh, study programs relating to criminal cover-ups. That's correct. Let me just raise this point with you. Yes. When uh, Quentin Bryce was the governor of Queensland, yes. uh, Kevin Lindeberg and others wrote to her about, quote, the Heiner affair, yes. explaining a whole heap of detail. Forget all of that and the detail of those letters. Yes. The then governor sought a report on the Heiner affair from Premier Beattie. Yes. My understanding is she received the report. Yes, it took 18 months to prepare. Correct. But neither she nor Mr Beattie ever made it public. That let's, is correct. Okay, let's go back then a further step. When the allegations were made against the former Governor-General Peter Hollingworth that he had failed to act and virtually by failing to act, now I'm not agreeing with this, but this was the allegation against yes. Hollingworth, he'd failed to act and therefore by failing to act had participated in a cover-up when there were allegations of sexual abuse made against church officers while he was the Anglican Archbishop of Brisbane, yes. and that led to Mr Hollingworth's resignation. The opposition leader, Simon Crean, said at the time that you cannot have people in authority who have covered up for child sex abuse and failed to act. Yet here is the then Governor of Queensland and several other senior Queensland politicians and judicial officers virtually echoing the point made by Mr Crean. They were made aware of the allegations against this 14-year-old girl and failed to act. Now, in that simple term, where do they stand? Well, clearly, a double standard uh, is being applied because uh, the Queensland government uh, prosecuted a, uh, a, a, a pastor, Pastor uh, Ensby, yep. uh, for exactly uh, the same uh, crime. Destruction, destruction of evidence. For the destruction of evidence. In fact, they sought a harsher penalty. They appealed it later on. Now, this, this, this was exactly the case that was laid out uh, to... Uh, uh, then Governor Bryce. Now she she has, I believe, acted totally improperly. Um, the governor is sworn to uphold the laws of the country. Of course, she seeks the advice uh, of her ministers, but that does not absolve her from the extraordinary responsibility that that, that her office carries. Mm. I mean, we have numerous cases in Australian history from Governor Game's dismissal of Jack Lang, the New South Wales Premier, uh, to uh, John Kerr's, uh, Sir John Kerr's dismissal of Gough Whitlam mm. as Prime Minister. But you had Simon Crean, the leader of the Labor Party, saying you can't have people in authority who've covered up for child sex abuse and failed to act. Here is a 14-year-old girl, yeah. Aboriginal girl, yeah. Aboriginal girl, can be raped in custody. Yeah. She's calling for the opportunity to seek justice. Yeah. She says, I want the truth to come out, and the Labor Party don't want to know about it. And the Labor Party has turned her back, and I can't tell you how nauseated I felt as I watched the footage of Kevin Rudd 
celebrating the uh, fourth anniversary of his ridiculous apology uh, on the television last night because uh, if he wants to apologise, he should he could do it in one fell swoop. He could apologise to this woman who's been a victim. This Aboriginal woman. Yeah. An Aboriginal girl, yeah. a, a, a juvenile, who, who I believe was a victim of his maladministration when he was the chief Correct. cabinet officer in the Goss government. Correct. And then what's more, she's paid $120,000 oh, in hush money. That, I mean, you, 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 how can you compensate? For, she received victim's compensation, Alan. Mm. How can you compensate a victim if you won't acknowledge that the crime took place? Extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, she said... How can you compensate somebody for a crime? That's right. On the one hand, and you say, and from Simon Crean to the Governor General, well, nothing, nothing to see here, folks. That's Move right. on. And now every senator in the federal parliament has the audit, the three thousand page audit, um, by the eminent Sydney QC David Rofe. Yes. So they are now in possession of information. What are they going to do with it? Well, that's right. They know, and that's they it. can hardly say that they are unaware of mm. this uh, yep. situation. They yep. are unaware of the whole affair. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, your listeners uh, have a greater sense of uh, social and moral responsibility than certainly the Greens, mm. certainly that former Senator Steve Fielding, Fielding who, who laughingly called himself well, family first. Well, he most probably was after a job. Well, let's see where he turns, yeah, turns up. And but I repeat, Simon Crean is. made the point in yes. relation to Hollingworth, and I thought Hollingworth yes. was very unfairly treated, but that's another story. In relation to Hollingworth, you cannot have people in authority who have covered up for child sex abuse and failed to act. Oh. Now, Quentin Bryce was in possession. She sought a report on the Heiner yes. affair from Beatty in 2003. She received it, yes. but neither she nor Beatty ever made it public. Well, that's correct. And we know from Bronwyn Bishop's committee yep, that's it. From, that she called for charges to be laid. That's correct. Now, Bryce herself has a, a law degree. She, she must know uh, what uh, uh, dangerous waters that she's treading in. And she can't, I don't believe, at this point, or even as, uh, when she was governor of Queensland say that uh, she has to accept the advice of her ministers. As we know that there is a precedent that if you're a, a sworn, sworn to uphold the law of the country, uh, it, does, it doesn't matter what advice you receive. It's on your individual responsibility. An attempt was made to have this matter debated in the Senate last year, mm. stopped by the Labor Party and the Greens, stopped by a family first, Senator Fielding, yes. voted to stop the matter being debated. Yes trying to win some overseas posting from the Labor government when he knew he was going to lose his Senate spot, I suppose. Yep. Well, it's, we, uh, we will see where he... We, well, the clerk of the Senate, Dr Rosemary Lang, yes. in Advice 47, wrote last year, quote, having seen the material, yes. there is no doubt the matter raised is very serious. Well, She's, I think that, that is an extraordinary... Uh, that's an extraordinary admission on, on a very senior parliamentary officer's part. Hmm. Because she has read the material. Mm. She judged it to be serious, and she issued what is a public advice. Now, the public, if they look to uh, the clerk's advices, will see that note. But they won't know what it refers to, mm. because the material has been kept secret by this government, which is doing everything it can to cover it, to maintain the cover-up. Absolutely. Isn't that extraordinary, Alan? Well, it is extraordinary, but we talked about it before, yes. and we'll talk about it again. Yes. And we saw, and so there was last night, uh, Julia Gillard, another cover-up this time in relation to what she knew and how much she knew about the assassination of a Prime Minister. It's a metaphor of the government, of course, but it now has become infinitely more serious. Every senator now has had electronically delivered to him or her the 3,000-page document. So there's no excuse now for pleading ignorance. I don't know what it's about. No. They're in possession of it. As, is, as was Quentin Bryce, Simon Crean made the point. You can't have people in authority, and that includes senators, who've covered up for child sex abuse and failed to act.